Up to this point, we've presented uh, several different approaches to convolution. And uh, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, an, an additional approach, uh, an approach referred to as uh, uh, the Z-transform uh, approach to, G to, uh, to convolution. Now, our goal with these various approaches to convolution has been to help you visualize the process, uh, grasp the fundamental idea of what convolution is, and, and we're kind of giving this to you in different uh, formats, really just trying to develop this idea of, you know, okay, well, we've got the seismic wavelet, and it goes propagating down through the uh, subsurface, and it's reflected back to the surface uh, from each of the reflection coefficients or boundaries between layers in the subsurface. And, and we get a signal which is recorded at the surface, which is a composite a superposition of uh, these reflected wavelets. And it's in fact a linear superposition and um, you know combined with the um, operations of multiplication and summation. Uh, and, and we've seen that it's, it's uh, probably most conveniently and most compactly represented in matrix form. And what we're going to do here is to just introduce you to another uh, Approach referred to again as the Z transform approach to uh, convolution. Now we have a very simple example to present consisting of this simple two sample wavelet. So we've got amplitudes of one and minus one half. So these are the amplitudes, and uh, these are the amplitudes at times t equals zero. And t equal one. Of course, we could have a you know our sample rate could be 0 0.002 seconds or two milliseconds. Uh, so this could be 0 0.002 seconds. This could be a 0 0.004 seconds or four milliseconds. And we don't have a, uh, we don't the, there's a zero amplitude here, so we don't have anything to represent. This is basically a time axis here. And if we take a look at the z transform. Uh, the z-transform of this simple wavelet is just 1 times z to the 0 power minus 1 half z to the 1 power. Uh, the powers of z correspond to the sample numbers. 1 z to the 0. And we have the sample numbers shown here. z to the 0, z to the 1, corresponding to the second sample with coefficient minus one half. So that's our z-transform. Uh, we're going through this convolution process. We have the z-transform for the wavelet. The reflectivity sequence, uh, what would that z-transform be? Well, uh, we could use the same idea. Just remember that z's are raised to the power corresponding to the sample number. So we have z to the zero, z to the one, z squared, z cubed, and so on. Our z transform here. We don't have a uh, <clears throat> value for the second sample where the sample number is equal to one, so we don't have that in here. We just have the coefficients one half and two, one half z to the zero plus two z squared, and that would be the z transform of the reflectivity sequence. So the convolution would just be a polynomial multiplication of the z-transform of the wavelet and the z-transform of the reflectivity series. And I'd say you could go ahead and do this on a sheet of scratch paper. What I'm going to do now is just remind you of a graphical approach that we used previously to determine what the convolution is. And remember, we talked about taking the wavelet, reversing it, reversing the order of the samples in the wavelet. So we have the uh, we have a minus one half leading, followed by a sample value of one. We've taken the wavelet, we reverse the order of time, and then we're going through this multiplication process, sample by sample. So we have a minus one half times a value of zero for time minus one. So this is a causal. We're assuming that this is a causal process. Nothing is happening before we begin recording. So, uh, <clears throat> so we don't really have any uh, values represented here. 
So we go through this uh, multiplication. We get minus 1 half times 0 plus 1 times 1 half. Sum those two together, we get 1 half. That's the output at t equals 0. We slide the wavelet over one sample. We go through the multiplication process again. Minus 1 half times 1 half gives us a minus 1 quarter. Then we have a 1 times a 0, uh, which is a 0. So we end up with a minus 1 quarter here for the output at time t equal 1. And then we're just repeating this process over and over over again. Minus 1 half times 0, 0, and then we have 1 times 2, which is 2, so our output is 2. And then finally we have minus 1 half times 2, gives us this term, 1 times 0, 0, so we end up with a minus 1 here at output t equal 3. Now if we keep Sliding the wavelet, of course, we have uh, zeros in the reflectivity sequence, uh, so we're just going to continue to get more zeros, so we can stop here. And what you might do at this point, if you haven't already, is confirm that you know polynomial multiplication of these two Z transforms, one for the wavelet, one for the reflectivity series, is going to give you this result here which we went through graphically. We determined that the, you know, just back up here, we have output amplitudes of 1 half, minus 1 quarter, 2, and minus 1. We see that uh, graphically up here, 1 half, minus 1 quarter, 2, minus 1. And we also see that we're getting these coefficients, 1 half, minus 1 quarter, 2, minus 1, uh, at sample values of 0, 1, 2, and 3, through this polynomial multiplication process. And um, <clears throat> we're just uh, getting the output signal here again through the process of convolution. This is just one additional approach, uh, one additional way of looking at what uh, convolution is. So now we're going to take a little bit more complex uh, example here. We've got a wavelet with three terms. And uh, so I'd ask you to you know, think about what the Z-transform is. Uh, uh, just, just as kind of an exercise, you should see that the Z-transform is going to be these amplitudes times Z raised to each of these powers. So we have 1 times Z to the 0 plus 2Z to the 1 minus Z squared over 2. We have a coefficient of minus 1 half here. Uh, we have these, <clears throat> we have the wavelet down here. We're going to convolve it with the reflectivity series. The reflectivity series is, again, this is just a little bit more comp complex example to illustrate that it works. Um, these are the exponents again, which correspond to the sample numbers. And you should get a reflectivity Z transform of um, going through the same process. Amplitudes equal the coefficients. 1 half minus 1, 2 minus 1 half. Coefficients of Z to the sample number, Z0 z to the first power, z squared, z cubed. So now if we go through the polynomial multiplication process, we want to get the signal. We're just going to multiply these two polynomials together. Uh, we have the wavelet. We have the reflectivity series uh, represented in this kind of stick-like form. And uh, we know that the um, signal should be equal to the product of these two polynomials. And again, as another uh, exercise, you might uh, take it on yourself to uh, sit down and just kind of work through this uh, uh, polynomial multiplication process, see what you come up with for the signal. And if you do, you should see that the output that you get is uh, <clears throat> 1 half minus 1 quarter z squared plus 4z cubed minus 2z to the fourth plus 1 quarter z to the fifth. So we've got this uh, idea of a convolution um, process as a product of z transforms. We came up with this result. Here we've represented it as a little uh, stick diagram here. Now I would ask you, you know, maybe just um, um, <clears throat> as a mental exercise, think about 
reversing this wavelet, going through the multiplication process, sliding it through this reflectivity series, and seeing what you come up with. Notice that if we take the first couple terms, which is, is easy to do, we reverse the wavelet, and so the wavelet is extending out in this direction. We have an overlap of the 1 half with the 1, so we get 1 half times 1, we get this output, 1 half. Then we slide the time series one sample, so we get a overlap of 1 here, an overlap of 2 here. So we get uh, 1 times a minus 1, which is a minus 1. And then we get 1 half times 2, which is a plus 1. And plus 1 plus minus 1 gives us a 0, which is the output for the second sample. And I won't try to, to, to go through this um, a third time, but, but just a different, different approach that we used, and we're coming up with the same result. Um, we get this result very nicely from the a polynomial uh, Z transform multiplication. So, well, we just did this, but uh, but again, it you know it would be something worth uh, kind of tying back to the uh, uh, ideas that we previously developed. So, and if we again just kind of returning to our um, earlier simple example, uh, we did talk earlier about the process of hanging the wavelet from the uh, reflectivity series, each reflection coefficient in the reflectivity series, and scaling the wavelet. Here I've just got a copy of the wavelet. And we're scaling it by the um, amplitude of the reflection coefficient, and then plotting the result over here. So we're just taking the amplitudes of 1 and minus 1 half and multiplying them by one half, so that we get one times one half is one half, and then minus one half times one half is minus one quarter. So we've just taken the wavelet, we've hung it from the first reflection coefficient, we've scaled the amplitudes in the wavelet by the reflection coefficient, the, mag the, the uh, amplitude of the reflection coefficient, and we get a scaled version of the wavelet hanging from that reflection coefficient. And then we go through the same process again with the, and I've left a gap in here so it, it's easy to see what the result will be. We have 1 times 2, which gives us a 2. We have a minus 1 half times 2, which gives us a minus 1. So you can see that we just have uh, replicates of the wavelet. These are both re positive reflection coefficients, and we've just uh, scaled the wavelet by one half in this case and by two in this case. And uh, the results are just shown here in the uh, output, output signal. So this is yet another kind of a graphical approach to the process of uh, convolution. And uh, so we're just kind of trying to re reinforce uh, some of those ideas. If we move those um, reflection coefficients closer to each other, we have some overlap. We still get the same result, but remember we have to go through the summation process. So in our wavelet, we have this value of 1 half and minus 1 quarter, which are added to the values of 2 and minus 1. So our output over here, of course, is 1 half because we have no um, overlap, and over here it's 2 minus 1 quarter, or 1 and 3 quarters. And then over here we have no overlap, so our output is minus 1. But it's, it's the same idea, so you might want to um, <clears throat> kind of review some of those ideas, and also just on a sheet of scratch paper confirm that uh, you can get this result by going through that um, Z transform operation. Where in this case we just have, um, you should get the signal equal to 1 half plus 1 and 3 quarter z minus z squared. So that's um, the z transform approach to convolution. Uh, I hope that provides some additional insight into the convolutional process. Um, and um, I uh, 
have to thank you for joining me and uh, hope to see you again next time.